Hi, I'm Paul Mahoney. This is Proper Wealth, the show where we discuss all things wealth creation with a focus on property. Today we're discussing innovation in property management and joining me is Jess Ford from Hurdle. Hi Jess. Hi Paul. Thank you for joining me. So we're talking about innovation in property management. Um, I think probably the best place to start is first off, you know, what, what is property management and, and, and what's the, the solutions that are being provided in that market. Um, my take, I suppose, is that that market is kind of, it's pretty stagnant. You know, the, the current solution is pretty similar to the solution a decade ago and probably a long time before that as well. Um, and, and there's probably a lot of innovation that, that can take place in that space. Mm. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd say the thing that struck me um, about what was going on in the sector is the focus was on um, development. Um, we've seen a huge um, increase in institu institutional investment um, yeah. in in the rental sector over the last five, ten years. Um, and there's been some phenomenal developments that have come up. But my concern is I looked at what was out there and what happens when a development's ready and it's got all fantastic facilities, um, it looks brilliant on day one, um, how do you sustain that so that on five years down the line it's still um, as good a level of building yeah. as, as, as it was on day one. And really, it looked like there was no focus on the management okay. to do that and to sustain that. If you looked at what was out there, as you say, it was all exactly as it has been for the last five, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, yeah. stuck in the dark ages. Okay, all right, so, so fairly archaic sort of system um, mm. with regards to, to how those properties are being managed. Um, okay, and, and, and what's starting to come about so far as that innovation? What, what is the innovation that's taking place in that space to, to solve that problem? There's been, th if you look at the whole process flow from uh, uh, when you have a rental, so from the point of a property being bought by an investor to when it's eventually sold and all of the, um, the rentals and the renewals and the processes that go on in between that, on the transactional side of things, that's largely been looked at. You've got Right Move, you've got Zoopla, you've yeah. got Purple Bricks, plenty of, of, of companies that, are, that, have, that have come along and, and kind of done great things there. Yeah. But then if you look at the whole service side, it's stuck in the dark ages. Okay. Um, you know, maintenance. I'm a tenant, I call up to report a problem. My agent picks up the phone, I'll call the contractor. Contractor, I can do five o'clock on a Friday. Yeah. Tenant, I can't do Monday. I can only do Monday at seven p.m. You know, and then before you know it, it's kind of three months down the track, and the issue is still not sorted. I mean, yeah. is that really how we live today and everything else? Mm. When you look at the tenancy process, there's really five key things that change on a tenancy agreement. That's rent, uh, security deposit, um, term, and um, minimum stay. Yeah. And really, do you need to charge hundreds of pounds for that? You know, it doesn't happen anywhere else. And more to the point, you could just send out those, fill in those five key details, send it digitally out to the landlords, digitally out to the tenant. Yeah. They both sign, done, move on. Yeah. You know, the payments process, even my bank account, I take it for granted that I see you know, banks, some of the most you know, outdated institutions, I can still see my bank account in real time. Yeah. Why, why do I have to wait for a statement at the end of every month that just shows me a snapshot, it doesn't really show me what's happened in terms of transactions, but shows yeah. me a snapshot at the beginning and the end of each month. Okay. It's madness, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's about solving, solving that problem so far as, you know, as you say, the archaic way of getting on the phone and trying to organise a, a, someone to come in and fix your toilet, for example. Yeah. Um, when it could all just be done from you know, the palm of your hand. Well, exactly. And, and when, you, when we looked at the innovation that was going on on that service side of things, predominantly it's either been pieces of software that plug into various parts of that process, so software that um, makes the inventory process more efficient or makes... Um, the the viewings um, more efficient for agents, but ultimately they s they're either doing parts of the process and or they're selling to existing agents, yeah. and ultimately, unless you do that whole process and you focus on y the underlying customer, the landlord, yeah. and ultimately the tenant, then you're really not going to disrupt the whole thing well, and change to together, don't they? change things for the better. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, great. And I think some of what you're saying there um, becomes even more relevant given some of the recent legislative changes around letting fees. Mm. Um, 
something that which I think is is a good change in that rather than charging you know tenants that generally can't afford to pay five six seven hundred pounds entry fees to their property mm. um, that the, that that's not able to happen anymore. Um, there's been lots of speculation about that being passed on to landlords because I know for a fact that a lot of agents, you know, London, London, not just London, but UK uh, round agents, their whole business model is based on those fees mm. that they were charging tenants. Um, and I suppose what you're saying is there's not really any need for those fees, is there? Um, especially when all the agreements and things are just pretty much templates uh, and can be automated. Exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, the if you look at what agents, the kind of average fee um, for, 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 for full management of a property, um, it's, it's anything up to high teams, even 20%, once you add on all the hidden costs yeah. involved. So that isn't just the kind of the added extras, but it's also, if you look in the small print, you'll find often that it's referral fees back to contractors or yeah. it's arrangement fees. You know, it goes back to what I was saying before, which is why do we need to, why, why, A, why do we need to charge them? But B, really, why should we charge it? And what I feel strongly and what our business feels strongly about is, is opening up transparency in the sector. Yeah. There's a chronic lack of trust. Okay. Um, and to go back to my thoughts on why we need to ad address the whole process, we really need to start from scratch and provide a full alternative to what's out there yeah. um, to really change things. So a, a company or an offering that doesn't, doesn't charge extras, that's modern, transparent, and that is focused on the underlying customer, landlord and ultimately tenant. Mm. I mean, I always say, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a, a, a landlord, I've probably got assets elsewhere. You know, if I've got a share portfolio, I can usually log in and see in real time exactly what, what, what the current status of my share portfolio is doing. Yeah. Why don't I get that with my property portfolio? Mm. You know, it's, it's common sense. It is common sense, yeah. And I think it's something that probably a lot of people haven't thought of. But once they are presented with that solution, then it becomes common sense and it beca becomes something that is, is, is valuable. It's what they say. You don't... <laughs> Real innovation is something that you don't know that you needed until yeah. you see it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's what we feel strongly about, and that's what we see with the solutions that we believe um, should happen for for all involved in the process. Mm. I mean, it's about integrating everyone in the process as well. Yeah. You know, you need to provide a solution that that serves owners, and and as I said, allows um, uh, owners to see. Um, their their real estate portfolio just like they would any other asset class to have complete oversight over the maintenance to see in real time their financials to track performance to have a, a complete oversight of any tenancies or renewals that are going through but not have to do it themselves so and then for 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 residents it's about feeling that they're well supported that they're they're looked after that they're not just someone that's that's occupying a property for contractors, it's about making sure that they can do their job more efficiently, um, bid for jobs, quote for jobs, um, and, and get things done more quickly. And ultimately, it's for staff too, because we've got to invest more in the staff that work in property management. Yeah. And I've, I, it's another thing I feel that's lacking. You know, the, the negotiator side has typically been the darling of the property world. Yeah. Um, people tend to think, oh, well, Property management is about fixing people's problems. It, it's not. It's a vital job. Yeah. If I'm if I'm a, a portfolio manager in the city of London, you know I'm proud of my job, you know, and people respect it. Why isn't there the same level of, of respect for for property managers? Mm. It's just as important role. Yeah, no, I think that's very true. Um, and, and yeah, I think you're right. I think it's the, the, and the focus there, I suppose. Pro the reason it's probably gone that way is there's probably been for the agents more money in the negotiated side of things, w would you say? That's probably therefore why that's been more so the darling of the industry. Well, absolutely. A and, and the letting side has probably been neglected. Absolutely. Um, and hence, that's why it has, has that sort of stigma attached to it. Well, most people go into, in my experience, most people go into to property, um, into agency, to be a negotiator because of the commission. Yeah. You know, it's it's a lucrative job, um, and you get your company car and and you get your all the perks with it. So why wouldn't you? And there are fewer people who fall into or choose 
to go into property management rather than fall into it. And actually, as a result, they, they haven't got the training, they're not paid properly, you know, they don't have the systems that support them. It's no wonder that there's such a high turnover of staff in property yeah. management. And actually, it's one of the main concerns of landlords that we hear. Yeah. Um, you know, they say, there's, I'm constantly speaking to a different person every week. And that's because the property man good property managers are struggling. Yeah, okay. you know, why shouldn't we invest in them? Yeah, okay. So essentially, the, the whole, and, and that just trickles down, doesn't it? The whole system's kind of broken in a way because you've got you know, high turnover of staff, under-trained staff, un unpaid, uh, underpaid staff. Yeah. Um, that results in a you know, lacklustre service to the landlords. The landlords are upset with the agents. The, and, and, and also the tenants become upset with both the landlord and the agents. Which exactly. affects the, the, the reputation of the whole industry as a whole, I suppose, in a way. Yeah, I mean, to go back to the, the topic of what this discussion is about, innovation and property yep. management, we see that there's two things, there's two sides to it. There's technology, but there's also people. Mm. Um, for us, the technology should enable the service. It shouldn't just define it. Um, I think I mentioned earlier on about the computer not being able to fix a broken toilet. Yeah. So property management until that point, and if we reach that point, yeah. is always going to be about people. Mm -hmm. So for us, technology needs to enable our staff as well as our clients to have a better experience. Okay. So if you look at the number of process, processes, manual processes involved in a typical property manager's day yeah. or agent's day, you know, there's multiple repetitive tasks. I mean, on the agent side, as an example, an agent could go out and have five viewings during an afternoon and by the time they've finished all of their viewings it's only when they get back to the office at the moment that they then have the time to do the paperwork but if you use technology and you have a technology that allows them when a, you know they're sitting in their car between viewings and, and an agent uh, and, a, and a prospective tenant comes and says you know I want to make an offer call the landlord are you happy with this offer yep and, and then immediately on their phone, they're able to add the tenant details, add the terms, confirm them, send for the holding deposit. And by the time they've got back to the office, you know, they've got, they've got five tenancies going yeah. through. Isn't that more efficient? Okay, great. Well, that's all we've got time for now. We need to go to a break and we'll come back to this discussion. Please don't go away. We'll be back right after this break. Property is a great investment option, but it's one of the largest purchases that you'll ever make. As individuals, we're all limited by our resources, and regardless of our experience, knowledge, or time, we can achieve much more with the help of a qualified team and extra resources being available. Nova Financial specialize in assisting clients to achieve financial freedom through property investment. With over 100 years of experience, we shape your family's future. To invest in property with absolute confidence, call us on 0203 8600 or visit nova.financial. I'm going to ask, have you ever lost money in Spain buying property off plan? If you have, well, we maybe have the solution today. With me is Michael Coyne of Reclaim in Spain. Welcome to you. And Martin De La Heron, lawyer from Alicante. Welcome to you too. Now, something changed in the mid 2000s here that made claims possible to get this money back. Yes, the Spanish Supreme Court basically issued a judgment interpreting a law from 1968 confirming that the banks that received the deposits for clients that bought properties in Spain that were never built were responsible for not ensuring that those monies were properly bank guaranteed. Okay, so the responsibility for looking after that deposit falls clearly with the banks now rather than any defunct developer. Yes, as long as the property wasn't built, of course. Michael, talk us through the process. Somebody uh, uh, recognises their situation here. What should they do? Call you and tell their story? Call us first of all, and we'll take them through exactly the process. We'll, we'll put people at ease to let them know that it's actually a very simple process. It's not a big heavy litigation on, on their behalf, but we do all the work. Um, we'll audit every, every case that it comes in. The vast majority of people that phone have got cases because it's a very simple structure. You know, if they've put money down on a deposit, 
that went to a developer in Spain and that property wasn't built. As Martin said, it's protected by law. Here's a crunch question for you. What's it going to cost? In most cases, nothing because we claim for the amount that's put down, the capital, plus interest on that capital, which often goes back 10, 12, 14 years. The fees we charge are taken up by that capital. So in most instances, people will get back at least or more than they put down as their original deposit. Okay, and if you don't win? We don't charge a penny. That's amazing, that's really good news. Now, look, are there any time constraints here? Yes, there are time constraints. There is a time limitation of 15 years since the house should have been uh, handed over. And since 2015, there is another time limitation of five years maximum. So generally speaking, most of these cases uh, will have a time limit in September 2020. I think what we need to really know, what's your success rate? Well, nearly 100 percent because all firm and final cases have been won so far. So we are, we are really nearly there. Okay, so very clear what you must do. Call, reclaim in Spain, make your claim, tell your story, and let's hope you're successful. Meet the Author is a brand new mini-series involving leading experts in the property industry, including mentors, developers, property lawyers and other industry experts who share insightful stories about their journey and their books. Each book is compiled by authors with years of valuable experience, tips and observations, providing you with new knowledge about the property industry. To find out more, visit the website property-tv.co.uk forward slash library. Hello and welcome to Property TV. I'm Stephen Galpin, host of Property Question Time. We've completed the filming of Series 1, over 260 successful episodes. We're now about to film Series 2. The difference? Well, we're going to be filming in our new studio adjacent to the Canary Wharf development. Keep those questions coming in to us, keep our panellists, our experts busy, and we hope you enjoy the new series as much as you did the last one. Welcome back to Proper Wealth. Today we're talking about innovation in property management and with me is Jess Ford from Hurdle. Thanks for joining me again, Jess. Um, right, so before the break we were talking about, well, in general innovation in property management, but some of the, fa some of the limitations in the current solution mm -hmm. and also the fact that current technology isn't really being very well utilised in the property industry. And you mentioned the example of, you know, um, the property manager having to go back to the office and do all the paperwork the kind of old-fashioned way um, Which made me think of something that I thought uh, just earlier this week I was buying a property in Manchester and I had a stack of you know contracts this high and I, the, the solicitors insisted that I go through that stack of contracts and sign them with ink um, and you know, initial every page, and I'm sitting there thinking, this is ridiculous in this day and age. Why am I doing this mm. when you know a digital signature is legally binding and is just so much easier? Mm. Um, and then you have to stick it in the post and hope the Royal Mail doesn't lose it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. seems silly, doesn't it, when, when you say Absolutely. it out loud in, in this day and age? So I think in general, technology could be so much better utilised in, in property, not just property management, but, but right throughout the whole process. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I completely agree. Um, I, think, I think one of the things that's happened in property, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about um, the innovation that's been, that, that's out there and has been there, is, has primarily been kind of small bits um, plugging into various parts of the process and then ultimately selling focus, that selling focused on, on agents. Yeah. So actually then when when it comes to the landlord the old underlying landlord it's 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 sort of all new where right. there's you know and there's sort of bits of this and bits of that and actually there's nothing that does the whole process and makes yeah. it sort of clear um and 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 sort of undaunting to landlords yeah, okay. i mean that's that's what we believe strong, strongly and one of the things we've be, been developing it's taken us sort of two years to develop 
um, a platform that takes a a really a, a complex process, but it's not rocket science. I mean, we always say property management is not rocket science. I think there's been this kind of black box attitude yeah. to it that you know it's it's really complicated and it's really difficult. Property management is about communication, transparency, and customer service, and and actually. What if you if you just peel back the complexities that it's normal humans always make things overcomplicated. But what we've been doing is taking that process and thinking right, how do we go back to intuitively the process that would follow? Yeah. So for example, you know, like your example of yeah. of the digital signing, it doesn't have to be scary. It's 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 what we take for granted in signing many other contracts. It's just making sure that it, from a landlord's point of view, they understand you know that it's secure. That, that, that it's all part of the process flow. Yep. Um, and, and actually that takes time as well. Um, and, and it takes explanation. And, yep. I, and, and I think that that's... Okay. And, and I suppose in a way, in utilising that technology, it also sort of releases the, the landlord and in a way the tenant from relying too much on the agent. So you mentioned about making agents' lives easier and that, that's good and, and improving the, you know, the start, whole staffing side of things. Um, but I think it was something that I've definitely experienced is a lot of landlords get quite frustrated with their agent mm -hmm. and a lot of tenants get quite frustrated with their landlord mm -hmm. or, or, or one of those sort of combinations. Mm. Um, whereas I suppose ha having this technology in place that sort of automates and makes it all easier will just kind of make all three of those people's lives easier, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what we firmly believe and what we've done is to integrate a um, platform for all stakeholders. So that's owners. Um, and investors, it's uh, residents, tenants, it's agents and staff, and it's contractors too, mm. because they're always forgotten. But ultimately, you know, the crux of property management, a lot of it is about good quality contractors and good work. Yep. So, and, and second to that, you know, you talk about no one trusts anyone. And I think that's because of this lack of transparency. So it's what we've done is to clear away um, the, the, uh, the you know how how completely complex and and kind of difficult it is and just make it completely clear guided processes and one of the things you touched on which i think is quite good is about you know we need to really focus on the tenant as well and the tenant experience um you know if you look at what motivates landlords um and what landlords are concerned about well there's kind of two key two key parts to it. Yep. Number one, it's asset value. So protection and enhancement of asset value. And number two, it's income stream. Yep. And both of those things fall back on really good property management. Really good property management is fundamental to that. Yep. Because it's the, the asset value, enhancement and protection is about really good um, works and being able to identify problems before they become issues. Yep. And the income stream is about reducing voids and making sure you have long-term tenancies. How do you do that? You do that by making sure that your tenants are happy. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things we think is, and in, in, in why the tenant interface is so important on our platform, is so that they feel supported, they feel that they're well looked after, that any issues that are raised are sorted out, and ultimately they feel that it's a home rather than just being, as I said earlier, yeah. an occupant in, in a property for a certain yeah, period that. of time. And I suppose, you know, in simple terms, a, t a happy tenant is going to be a tenant that pays the rent on time and yeah. looks after the place. And actually, from a maintenance perspective, there's probably going to be far less maintenance if the tenant you know, does feel as though it is their home and they're being looked after. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, you can then look into tenants wanting to make small improvements to the home mm. if necessary or you know they're more likely as you say to 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 propose real or raise real uh, justified problems rather than wasting wasting time yeah so it, it, it benefits everyone that makes a lot of sense and i think another point that is quite relevant is is a, a, a shift that's taking place in the in the uk well not just the uk but pretty well all property markets at the moment toward inner city living mm. um by young professionals, you know, the younger generations. Something I often talk about is, is that shift away from the dream being the you know, quarter acre block with the garden and the picket fence out in the suburbs, more so toward having bars, restaurants, cafes, jobs on your doorstep. Mm. And that's resulting in the repopulation of city centres 
in pretty well all the major cities UK wide. Mm. The people that are populating those properties are young professionals who are tech savvy and would much, you know, would, would appreciate these solutions probably more so than, their, than the older generations. Is that, would you say that's fair? Yeah, I mean, it's probably, yeah. I mean, it's, it's natural, isn't it? Yeah. The, 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 younger, the younger generations will appreciate the technology. But I think in response to your point about um, that, that people are moving towards city living, I mean, if you, it's more looking at what the development that's coming as a result of that is. Yeah. And it's all, it, it's more and more property, the development of properties that require management, so leasehold management. Yep. So, you know, ever more we're seeing cities expand and, and therefore it's flat, living in flats, apartment blocks, yep. and they all require management of the communal parts, as well as, you know, if it's a build to rent, um, the, 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 the properties themselves within that block. Yep. So it's, it's just going back to the fact that, you know, manage lettings and property management and block management done properly is so important yeah. and again in terms of your point about happy tenants and, and and how people are living more in terms of rentals you know it now takes the average first time buyer something like 20 years to save for a deposit so whether we like it or not as a society we're looking at long-term rental yeah. so it needs to be done better yeah, absolutely. And, and I like the point that you made there about the, the human aspect to it. You know, technology is great. It makes mm -hmm. our lives easier. And we spoke about the three main people of this, this sort of technology's lives made easier from it. But obviously that there is a human aspect to it as well. And, and that's probably just as important. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, I said it earlier and it's, it's what we we believe, which is technology should enable service, particularly in property management. It shouldn't just define it. Yeah. Uh, because again, as, until a computer convict, I'm like a broken yeah. record, <laughs> uh, a broken toilet, then you know it's going to be about people. Yeah. Um, so it's about so making lives easier as opposed to replacing people. Then exactly, yeah. and I think, I think you know the the buzzwords of the moment can be you know AI this and you know uh, these sort of words that are used. But and and going back to your earlier point about you know it's slow people are slow to adopt it's because there's a, a lack of understanding about it and it's a fear factor mm -hmm. and actually technology doesn't need to be um, need to be scary or daunting uh, and actually we should learn to walk before we can run so we need good technology that enables a good service now you know to then build on in the future thanks for joining us for this discussion on innovation on property management thank you Jess for joining us as well I think it was a very informal discussion Join us next time for more on property investment with a focus on wealth creation. Property is a great investment option, but it's one of the largest purchases that you'll ever make. As individuals, we're all limited by our resources, and regardless of our experience, knowledge, or time, we can achieve much more with the help of a qualified team and extra resources being available. Nova Financial specialize in assisting clients to achieve financial freedom through property investment. With over 100 years of experience, we shape your family's future. To invest in property with absolute confidence, call us on 0203 8600 or visit nova.financial. My name is John Howard and I've been investing and developing properties for over 40 years. In that time I've been a very successful but of course I've always made the odd mistake as well. In my book I explain how to be successful and what to do should something go wrong. I've survived three property recessions, I can help you do the same. My book is available online, please go to johnhowardpropertyexpert.co.uk